How are you? It's Rob Cornish and welcome to this video where I'm going to be giving you some advice on the different web pages you need in your online business and also where to actually put those web pages on the different sites that you might own uh, in your business. I've had a lot of questions about these, uh, these issues. So people saying, for example, you know, Rob, I've got several different domain names here and I've got a product, but I don't know whether I should put that on my main website or whether that should be on a separate website. And I want to have a squeeze page, but I don't know where to where that fits in or, or should that be kind of just off my blog or should that be on a different site and so on. So it's about the web pages you need and where to actually put them. So I'm going to use a lot of examples from my own business in this video. I want to be very clear from the outset, this is in no way any kind of pitch for my own products. Um, of course, you're very welcome to invest in my products, and if you choose to do that, if you feel they're a good fit for you, then thank you in advance. But you absolutely don't need to buy anything whatsoever. I'm only using the examples in, or the, the websites um, that I'm gonna show you in this video as examples, so we can look at what we're, we can understand what we're talking about here. So I hope that's very clear from the outset. So, if we were starting completely from scratch, and you may be starting completely from scratch, here's what you should do. And this is exactly what I would do if you wiped everything out in my business and I start, was starting from scratch today. The first thing is to go out and register your main website. And that is where your blog lives. And here's my blog in the internet marketing online business niche, gainhigherground.com. That's just my brand name that I chose. For you, you can also choose a brand name if you want to, or it could be your own name. Don't worry about Google. Don't worry about things like keyword rich URLs or anything like that. Uh, that's long gone, that stuff. You just want to focus on the brand and think about what appeals to um, people in your niche. So all you can see here is a very simple design. You wanna keep it nice and simple, um, some um, straightforward tabs at the top, and then I've got some articles or blog posts. So here's one in April. If we scroll down, I've got one in March, another one in March here, uh, one in January, and one in October, and so on. So you can see I don't actually blog that often. I only share things when I think I've got something worth saying and some quick tips or some advice that I'd like to get over that I think will help my audience. And that is the key thing with your blog. It's a platform for building relationships and, pro and providing value uh, to your audience. That's the main purpose of your blog. It's not to sell products. It's not to uh, build your email list necessarily. Um, it's a platform for building relationships. That's really important to understand. That said, of course, you can see on the right-hand side, I have an opt-in form. So this is one of my on-ramps, if you like. We're about to see some more on-ramps in a moment. But this is, so if people visit the blog and they think, oh, I quite like this and I, I wouldn't mind getting Rob's newsletter, they can enter their email address and they can sign up. And a few people will do that. But that's not the primary purpose of your blog because the primary purpose, like I say, is, is a platform for providing value to your audience um, and as your audience grows, of course, your blog becomes more important in that respect. So what about these other web pages that we've been alluding to? Well, we've dealt with your blog, which is yoursite.com. And another web page, which is very important, is your squeeze page. So this is just simply a page off your main site. You can see here in the example, we've got yoursite.com forward slash free gift. Obviously, you could use any name you want, but the point is it's simply a page off your main site. Here's an example, which is at gainhighground.com forward slash system. And you can see it's a very, very simple squeeze or opt-in page. People can just come along, they can click the button, enter their email address, and they've joined one of my email uh, lists. The key difference between um, a squeeze page and the opt-in form on the sidebar of a blog is that here on the blog there's lots of other distractions. People can click around, they can read articles and so on. So typically you might expect, this is ballpark figures you know, but maybe a 5% um, opt-in rate 
on this form on the sidebar because most of the time people are just reading the articles. Whereas on a squeeze page, the opt-in rate can be anywhere between 30% and 50%. Often you can get it even higher to 60, 70%, but as a ballpark figure, 30 to 50%, which you can see is a lot, a lot higher because the only thing to do on your squeeze page is actually join the list. So that's why it plays an important role in your online business. Now, another example um, would be this one. So uh, just another page on my website. This was actually for a webinar that I did with, uh, with a special guest we had. So again, it's just an opt-in page, essentially. You, people can click there and they can enter their details. Again, it's just a page off my main website. By the way, how do I create these pages? I use, personally, I use a plugin called Thrive Content Builder, which I really like. I think it's brilliant value for money, um, and I do recommend that as well. However, you don't have to use that. You can use many, many other plugins, whatever you feel um, comfortable with. So there's things like Optimize Press, um, Insta page, there's probably 10 or 15 different options. Lead pages is another one. They're absolutely fine, whichever option you go for. And always remember that customers and subscribers don't care. They don't care at all what software you've used. They just want to see a nice page with the benefits listed so it's attractive to them and a call to action. So don't get hung up on what software you use. Just remember the structure of what we're talking about here. Now the next page that we're going to look at, and this is really essential if you really want to take your business forward to a high level, and that's a sales page. So this is where you have a web page with a buy button on it, and people can actually give you money um, in return for one of the products or services that you're selling on the internet. Now here you can see a sales page for one of my products, which as you expect, as we just said, is just simply a page on my site. And we've got the headline at the top, which is rather unusual, but that's part of this particular uh, product and what it's about. And if we scroll down, there's various things on the page. Um, this is all structured, by the way, in a certain way. There's different elements and components that we use for sales pages. Again, it looks very complicated if you've never seen it, but once you learn about what these components are and also how to put them together, it's massively easier than you would first think uh, if, you, if you don't know about any of these things. So again, it's like everything else, it's just a learning process, that's all. And nothing here you can't do yourself. And of course, the key thing is the buy button. So just like with the squeeze page where there's nothing else to do apart from sign up with your email address, with a sales page, there's nothing else to do whatsoever apart from buy the product uh, because that's the only purpose of a sales page. Um, so that's the structure there. We can look at another example. Again, this is just uh, for a different product. This time, this one's for a, um, uh, my membership site, but it's just the same thing. So you can see um, a different page on my main site at the top here. And this one actually has a video. You don't have to use videos. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And again, we've got the, diff the structure of the page. And right at the bottom, here we go. There's effectively the buy button. So it's, it's the same structure, okay? And again, these pages are just ones that live on your main site. Now, one of the key attractions of having your own product is that it opens the door to one of the most powerful traffic sources you'll ever find anywhere on the internet. And that is getting traffic from joint venture partners and from affiliates. Not only is this traffic kind of effectively free, I say kind of, because you have to pay commissions, but you don't have to pay up front for it like you would do with paid traffic. But also the traffic from joint venture partners and affiliates is warm traffic because it's referred, it's recommended, and it's coming from a trusted source. So therefore the conversions and the amount of sales you make is far, far higher than you could ever make from paid traffic sources like Facebook ads or solo ads and so on. I'm not di dissing or, or saying you shouldn't do Facebook ads, solo ads, far from it. They can be very, very good, pay-per-click as well. But, I, I, but the attraction of affiliates traffic is immense. And that's why the next page that we have 
should be your joint venture page or your affiliates page. Again, it's just another page on your website. Here's an example for one of the same products we've already seen, which is a product of mine called Interrupt to Profit. It's just a product that um, I went out onto Google, I researched. I didn't know anything about this topic beforehand and I, I researched it and got rid of all the bad stuff and I brought all the good stuff that I found through Google and YouTube together, wrote a report on it and I, I put it out there um, uh, as, my, as my product. Um, it sold in total sales over a thousand copies in just a few weeks and all the traffic um, came from affiliates. Um, because I offered them a commission in return for promoting. So you've got to think a little bit further down the line. And the way I attracted affiliates was I contacted them and said, hey, look, um, here's my new product, the details on my joint venture or affiliates page. And that is here. So you can see this is not for customers, this is for affiliates or people that I would like to encourage to promote my product. So I'm giving them a re eight reasons to promote my product. Um, and there's all sorts of other um, funnel information about the front end and the upsell that I'm, I, I'm used. Um, there's actually emails that they could send to their email list. There's pictures they can use. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, this is a lot of stuff. I don't know if I could create all this. But remember, of course you can. It's just created in the same way. I use Thrive Content Builder, but you can use any plugin you like. Um, so it's created like all the web pages that you've seen so far. And remember also, the first time you create any of these pages will be the hardest. I'm in the situation now, and you will be as you, further down the line, that you'll have templates to work from. So after you do it the first time, then the next time is a lot easier because you can just adapt what you've already got. So these, for example, this page here, the joint venture page, doesn't actually take that me that long because I already have the structure of what it's going to look like. All these headlines are going to be the same. I'll just change the images, might rewrite um, some of the emails. Um, the diagrams are pretty much the same. This structure is, is the same. So it becomes easier. So keep that in mind. Don't be put off. Break things down into little chunks. Just be patient and persistent. Just keep going. Um, and what you'll find is actually it gets easier in, in many ways, actually. This is just one way it gets easier. Um, the further down the line you get. So what's next? Well, you can probably tell by this slide, we're onto the last type of web page um, that you really need in your business, and that is the download page. So this is what, after customers have bought your product, they get sent to a page uh, where they can actually get what they've purchased. Again, it's just a page on your website. And here's an example for the same product we've been looking at, Interrupt to Profit. So thank you for your purchase, support information, um, and then the, the, all the products, the downloads that, that people have actually bought. Uh, and that's it. Um, I've also linked some of my other products as well. So, you know, you can encourage cross-selling in, in, in for people who are interested in checking out your other stuff. But really, that's it. Now, these pages, you can either secure them with um, a, a member's plugin, like Wishlist Member, for example, is one of the ones that I use. Or you can even just keep them as hidden pages on your website. So hide them from Google, which is quite easy to do. And you might think that's quite insecure. And yes, of course, it can be shared around. But you know what? Your, if your products are any good, uh, they will always get ripped off. Somebody will buy them. They'll refund the purchase and then put it on file sharing networks and, uh, you know, people will get it for free. And I don't lose a wink of sleep about that um, because the kind of people that do that um, aren't really the ones that you probably want as customers anyway. They're, they're just kind of interested and they just like looking at different products and all of that kind of thing, which is fine. Um, and they, they wouldn't pay for your product anyway you know, if they couldn't get it for free. So it, it's nothing to worry about, really. Um, you want to focus on the, the high value subscribers and customers. So for very, for particularly for budget products, um, maybe if it's your first product, just keep it simple. You don't even have to secure your download page. You can just have it as a hidden page on your website, and that's absolutely fine. So I really hope that you can see here that it's actually very simple. It's your main site that you set up, and that's your blog, platform for building relationships and giving value um, to, the, to your marketplace. 
And then you've got different pages with a very specific purpose for each page. Okay, you don't mix them up, we don't confuse them. They're very specific purposes for each page. They provide a very important function in your business. And this is the same in any kind of profitable niche that you uh, are in or that you want to go in. So that's the setup. Now, there are some, a few little exceptions to the rules and some other ways of maybe thinking about this. So I don't, really don't want to get bogged down in this too much because otherwise we lose the transparency of what we're, we're talking about here. However, because of some of the questions that I've been getting that I mentioned at the start, I do want to say a couple of, make a couple of points about this. So here are some questions, two questions actually, and some kind of exceptions to the rules that we've been talking about. The first is, do you need a different domain for each product? Well, the simple answer is no, because as you've seen, the products, the sales pages for those products can all be, and download pages, can all be pages on your main website. However, in some cases, you may want to register a different domain for a new product that you're creating. One of the reasons that you might want to do that is if you want to create a separate standalone brand around that product, for that product. And that's kind of sort of what I've done with one of my products here, which you're looking at called SpyBuy, it's a software product. And you can see here that rather than being on my main website, gainhighground.com, I've actually put it on its own domain, wpspybar.com. Now this, this product has done pretty well over time and it still sells all the time, um, which is great. But would it have done less well if I'd have put it on a web page on gainhighground.com as we've just been looking at. Honestly, I don't think so. So in terms of sales, it probably doesn't make any difference. And remember, the customer, the people who are interested in, in your products, they don't care. They don't care what web page you put it on or anything. They just wanna know what the product is and if it can help them. So again, don't lose any time, don't lose any sleep, or don't worry about where you actually put these. In this case, yes, I wanted to try and put it, brand it, it's under its own domain name and that was great, but really it wouldn't make much difference. Another reason you might want to use your own domain name is if you've got a particularly large product in terms of content or a big kind of uh, bulk of information that you want to uh, house. And an example of that is my membership site. So even though we saw the, the sales page on my main website, this one is actually for the content itself um, and for members to log into is actually on its own domain. And that's because this really is, I mean, this is the biggest product I've got by far. It's, it's, it's huge, you know. Uh, there's tons of videos and all sorts of different stuff. So yes, I could put it on my main website, off my main blog, but really it's better to have a standalone system just to manage all this content. Um, again, would it affect the sales or the, you know, the interest in it? I don't think so, to be honest at all. It doesn't really matter. I mean, who cares? But it's just a, a sort of internal thing of how you manage it. So the second and final question is this, which is do you need a different domain for each niche? And the answer to this is absolutely 100% yes. Now we've already seen my main website in the internet marketing niche, which is gainhighground.com, but I also own this site, which is tinlunchboxeshq.com. It's a, it's a website about um, collecting vintage metal lunchboxes. This was the site I set up in 2010, or one of them, that actually was responsible for, uh, for me making my first few dollars online towards the end of uh, 2010. Um, but it's a different website. There's no way that I could mix this site with this one. You just want to keep them completely separate. So you've got to have a different domain name. Another site, which um, is one of mine, which is um, uh, a site that I use in, in um, Gain High Ground membership in the members area there, is this one, which is in the uh, careers or employment site, uh, employment niche, okay, which is a very profitable niche. Um, I have also, uh, in 2011, for example, I did a, quite a bit of work and, and got some great success in the stock trading niche. That was another site as well. So for all these areas, you've got to have different 
uh, websites. You can't put them together because if you do, it's just going to look a complete mess and you're going to turn everyone away. So like I said earlier, I would really like us to avoid the risk of getting bogged down here because we don't need to. And it's really quite straightforward and simple. Yes, there's some caveats and a couple of exceptions that we've looked at. But in the main, it's set up just like um, we looked at in the diagram. That has made me an awful lot of money. It makes loads of other people an awful lot of money in, in all sorts of different niches. So essentially, that's all you need. So if you were concerned about this, you weren't sure what to do, don't worry. Most of the stuff you find in this business that you end up worrying about doesn't matter at all. It all just comes down to keeping it simple and straightforward. So I hope this video helps. If you've got any questions, if you like this, if you hated it, um, or you'd like to clarify a few points or ask something else, the way to do that is just drop a comment below on the blog. I'd love to hear from you. I reply to all the comments on, my, um, on, on the blog. Um, so please do that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Talk again soon.